Hello and welcome to St. Matthew's Church, Park Hill in Croydon. A particular welcome if you are joining us for the first time today on this feast day of the presentation of Christ in the temple. We also welcome Alison Radford as our preacher this morning. If you are watching this on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, then straight after our service we'll be uh, joining in a Zoom uh, time to have fellowship and coffee if you've got one. So the details for that will be on the screen at the end of the service. I hope you've had a good week this week. But if you haven't, I hope that God will meet with you today as we sing his praise, as we hear his word, as we break bread together. May he meet with us, may he speak to us, may he feed us, and may we know the touch of his love, his grace, his mercy, and his peace. So we begin our worship as we sing the hymn, Earth was waiting, spent and restless. The Lord of glory be with you. The Lord bless you. Dear friends, 40 days ago we celebrated the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we recall the day on which he was presented in the temple, when he was offered to the Father and shown to his people. As a sign of his coming among us, his mother was purified. As we now come to him, for cleansing. In their old age, Simeon and Anna recognized him as their Lord, as we today sing of his glory. In this Eucharist, we celebrate both the joy of his coming and his searching judgment, looking back to the day of his birth and forward to the coming days of his passion. Hear the words of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. We'll spend a moment in silent prayer as we prepare to bring our sins to the foot of the cross, 
trusting in God's wonderful promises to always forgive us. So together we pray. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as God's forgiven people, we join together in the song of the angels, glory to God in the highest. to go. collect for today. Let us pray that we may know and share the light of Christ. A moment of silent prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the Word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. Our hearts and minds are open. First reading, taken from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Thus says the Lord God, See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, 
against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan against those who thrust aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 to 18 Since the children share flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help angels but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold, pure gold. Refiner's fire, my heart's one desire is to be.
And now Bernadette will bring us our gospel reading. Today the Lord is presented in the temple, in substance of our mortal nature. Alleluia! Today the Blessed Virgin comes to be purified in accordance with the law. Alleluia! Today Simeon proclaims Christ as the light of the nations and the glory of Israel. Alleluia! Praise to Christ! The light of the world. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer, night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now, in the name of our loving, liberating and life-giving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I volunteered to reflect on today's readings in this particular service because of the story of Simeon and Anna in our reading from Luke today. But before I talk about the Gospel reading, I just want to say a little about the many names that we use to describe this day. It's known as the presentation of Jesus in the temple, when Simeon recognises him as the Messiah. But this isn't just Jesus' day, the day when the firstborn son was presented in the temple, as was the duty of all Jewish parents. 
it was also the day for the mother to be purified, 40 days after the birth of her son, according to Jewish tradition. This day was celebrated as a feast as early as the 4th century, but other traditions have developed over time. Another name for this day is Candlemas. This was when candles were blessed in churches and were then used throughout the year. It's also the time when the greenery which decorated homes for Christmas was taken down. You may have taken down your decorations at Epiphany or Twelfth Night, but for a long time they were kept up for the full 40 days of the Epiphany season. But back to the Gospel reading. I've been privileged to sing Evensong for about four decades now, and I've always loved many of the versions of the Nunc Dimittis which I have sung. The Nunc Dimittis is the musical setting of Simeon's song, the name of which is taken from the first two words in the Latin translation. It's usually sung in English and it starts, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. I find the old words so evocative. On one occasion, I sang even song in Norwich Cathedral. In a side chapel, there is, I hope still, a wonderful large oil painting of the moment when Simeon cradles the baby Jesus in his arms and praises God for his having at last seen the child who will be the salvation of the world. It was a wonderfully contrasting picture with a dark background and a bright light shining on Simeon and the baby. It's a picture I will remember for a long time. During this service, after the communion, we will hear the Nunc Dimittis, and I've chosen some paintings of the scene with Simeon to look at while you listen. In some of them, you can also see Anna and Mary, Jesus' mother. Some of these paintings are in a similar style to the one in Norwich Cathedral, especially the one by Arendt de Gelder. In the Rembrandt picture, you can see that Simeon is longing for something that is beyond himself, beyond his own achievements. He longs for the consolation of Israel. And I don't think that can have been very easy. Luke tells us, in fact, that Simeon was warned that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Messiah, using the same word that Matthew uses when he tells the wise men and Joseph that they are warned in a dream almost the, of the treachery of Herod. And crucially, Luke does not tell us that Simeon is old, even though he says very precisely that Anna is very old indeed. Simeon may be a middle-aged man, or even a young one, when he takes the child in his arms and says, My time of service is now over. My obligation is ended. My purpose is complete. I am free. For Rembrandt, freedom meant freedom from the cares of this life. Simeon's eyes, that had seen so much, could now close in darkness, because they had seen the light of the world. We all long for this kind of certainty, whether we are at the end of life or its beginning. It's a promise that all will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of things will be well. Simeon holds the Christ child at the beginning of the drama of redemption, but he isn't there for the closing act. We don't know if he even sees the consolation of Israel that he's waited for at so much cost. His is a bit part, to come into the temple at the crucial moment and say those poignant words, and depart again, to say no more. God will allow his faithful servants to depart in peace, but only if we can accept that we come to an end. All manner of things will be well, but our own small story may be more or less well, as it is just one very small part the tiniest fragment of the story of humanity's life with God, which goes on around us, and before us, and after us. But we mustn't forget the ladies in this story. Mary was there, of course, and so was the prophet Anna. We don't have any direct quotes from her, but we are told that she is far from silent. In fact, 
It sounds like she said a lot more than Simeon did. She praises God and speaks about the child to all who are looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. In the end, we don't know what happened to either Simeon or Anna after this event. They must both have treasured the moment for the rest of their earthly lives and consider themselves blessed to have seen something that most humans would only glimpse briefly, like a dream. The psalm set for today is number 24, which talks about the everlasting doors. These refer to the doors of the temple, which all of today's characters would have passed through to meet up as they did. They are also a metaphor for the doors of heaven, where we will all meet up one day, and that's where I imagine we will find Simeon and Anna. You'll remember how the psalm ends. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Amen. Thank you, Alison, for those words. And now we sing the creed. Jennifer will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray to the Father through Christ, who is our light and life. Father, your Christ is acclaimed as the glory of Israel. Look in mercy on your church, sharing his light throughout the world. Especially we pray for our link diocese in Egypt as it builds Christian leadership in countries of North Africa. Guide its bishops, Munir Semi and Kim Seng, we pray, and bless their work with the poor and marginalised. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ in his temple brings judgment on the world. Look in mercy on the nations who long for his justice. 
Especially we pray for all those who work to create societies where the needs of all are recognised and injustice is rooted out. Help us to see how our own lives need to change and to make those changes. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Father, your Christ who was rich for our sakes became poor. Look in mercy on the needy suffering with him. Especially we pray for all those who feel crushed by the burden of the continuing pandemic, exhausted health workers, struggling families, young people at risk of mental illness. For all these and many more we pray. And in this parish we commit to your tender care Roger, Joan, Dorothy, Irma, Tim, Anne and Ray, Matt, Howard, Paul, Thelma, Rohini, Rose and Percy, Pam and Alan, Yvonne, Nicole, Gordon and Doris, Pauline and Norman, Frankie, Iris, Bob, Janet. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ is the one in whom faithful servants find their peace. Look in mercy on the departed, that they may see your salvation. Especially we remember at this time those who have died in the pandemic. And we pray for our sister Sue and her cousin Lynn, entrusting them to your loving arms. We ask that you will comfort those who mourn, Evelyn, Paul, Sean, Dulcie, Roman and Leslie Mead. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Father, your Christ is revealed as the one destined to be rejected. Look in mercy on us who now turn towards his passion. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, you kept faith with Simeon and Anna and showed them the infant king. Give us grace to put all our trust in your promises and the patience to wait for their fulfilment. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we come to share the peace. If you are by yourself, may you know God's love and his peace to be around you and with you at this time. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high has broken upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And if you are with others, then now let us share together a sign of God's peace. Now we sing the hymn, Love Divine, or Love's Excelling.
And so we come to our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is one with you from all eternity. For on this day he appeared in the temple in substance of our flesh to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people and brings to light the image of your splendor. Your servant Simeon acclaimed him as the light to lighten the nations, while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, and a sword of sorrow pierced his mother's heart, when by his sacrifice he made our peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name, that we too have seen your salvation and join with angels and archangels in their unending hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. 
so that we in the company of St. Matthew and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. So let us now share bread and wine, tokens of God's love. The body of Christ, broken for us, keep us in eternal life. of Christ shed for us. Keep us in eternal life. Amen.
Now we sing the song, like a candle flame, flickering small in our darkness. And so we come to our prayer after communion, a moment of silent prayer. Lord, you fulfill the hope of Simeon and Anna, who lived to welcome the Messiah. May we who have received these gifts beyond words prepare to meet Christ Jesus when he comes to bring us to eternal life. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As our service draws to a close, we sing the hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Jesus display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Here and here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Before we close with the final responsory and the blessing, again, a huge thank you to all those who've taken part in today's service. Particular thanks to John for all his work behind the scenes. And I hope that you'll be able to join us after the service on Zoom and uh, we'll have a time of sharing if you're watching this um, at, uh, on Sunday morning. The Responsory. Father, we have sung your praise with shepherds and angels. May Christ be born in our hearts today. Praise to Christ our light. We have shared in the joy of Simeon and Anna. Help us like them to trust your word. Praise to Christ our light. We have greeted Jesus, the light of the world. May we be filled with the light of your love. Praise to Christ, our light. Christ, the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love and all those for whom you pray, this day and forevermore. Amen. May we remain in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>